Well, hello. You are about to meet a very important person, the president <laughs> of the American Impressionist Society and a fabulous artist, meet Deborah Joy Grosser. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I really man. It, it wouldn't, be, wouldn't be the same without having you. I mean, <laughs> you're so fine. Thank you. So uh, we are excited about having you on today because, uh, first off, I know what you're going to do, and you're going to tell everybody, I'm going to give them a little teaser of what you're going to do. What is that? Well, the the thing that I find when I teach uh, that students struggle with the most is um, the idea of values and how to express values accurately in your painting. So I'm going to do a little demo and give you some tips on that today. Yeah, well, I saw part of your, uh, I saw a part of what you prepared, and there's a piece of that that most people don't even know about. And and I think that when you uh, when you show that, everybody's going to be blown away by something that, you know, once you, you hear it, you go, oh, I never thought of that. Uh, but the way you've done it is going to really help them cement that in their heads. So that's going to be exciting. And Great. today is also a red letter day, right? Because you have a new video out. Oh, I'm my God. excited about that. <laughs> So excited. I can't even tell you. I, I got the postcards in the mail and the cards and everything. And it just, it, it's, it's, I am so thrilled to share, you know, it, pretty much everything I know I shared in this video. I put in everything but the kitchen sink. So I just, I really hope everybody is inspired and, and, uh, and, you know, when they watch it, I just hope they love it and they're inspired to go do more beautiful work. Yeah, I think they will be. And, and you know, that's uh, when we started creating videos originally, you know, I, I remember thinking, I wish that I had a video of John Singer Sargent painting because we all have these discussions about how did Sargent paint? Did he paint slow and deliberately? Did he put that, you know, that amazing brush brushwork in at the last minute? And, there, you know, there's some comments from students. There's some things that people have recorded, but nobody really knows. And so one of my goals is are to take the, the artists of our generation, the artists of our time and preserve them for, for history. But also, uh, you know, when you're, when you're trying to learn painting, it's so frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you how many things I forget, you know, I'll, I'll go to a workshop and I will, completely space out on about 80% of it. You know, I'll walk away remembering 20% of what they said. And then mm -hmm. once I kind of get that stuff down, I, what I would used to do is I'd go back to the workshop again. And that's okay too, because then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I remember that now. Well, the nice thing about the rewind button is, you know, if you can try things, you can go back to it. So mm -hmm. I, th I think this is going to be a good adventure for you. We're, we're certainly happy to to be a part of that. We're, we're honored that you would do it. Oh, I was honored that you asked me. I was, I was blown away. <laughs> so. well, you know, we only ask the best, so. <laughs> uh, you're going to make uh, me bless. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drop you off for a second. I'm going to uh, say hello to everybody, and then uh, we'll be back. If you need to adjust your camera or whatever you need to do, you can do that okay. now. Sounds right. good. Our, our guest today is Deborah Joy Grosser. She is a fabulous artist. She's also the president of the American Impressionist Society. We're going to hear a little bit about that today, too, I'm sure, if, if we ask her, uh, because it might be something that you should learn about, something you might want to be considering. Uh, we are here now. Today is day number 240. Can you believe that? I mean, can, it, it just seems unbelievable to me. Now, if you are just tuning in, and by the way, yesterday we had new people from other countries, uh, new people from cities throughout the United States that I had never seen before. Now, they had been maybe been watching, but first time in comments. And uh, so I kind of go through this for the newbies. So if you've heard this before, forgive me. But the uh, when, when COVID started, when we started quarantining, I got together with my team and I said, we've got to do something for these people. we got to do something because we were all... We're, you know, I was talking to my team members and we're, everybody's freaking out. What am I, what are we going to do? Are we going to be working? Are we going to be out of business? Are we going to be, you know, are we going to die? You know, so we were all hearing so much misinformation and, and, and so much information that was conflicting. And so I decided, I said, look, guys, this is going to be extra work. 
but let's just come on every day and we'll do two things every day. I'll come on 12 noon and we'll just kind of talk about stuff and things. I'll bring guests on the show. And the goal is to try to keep people upbeat and feeling good about things and not to allow them to get so consumed by the world and what's going on in the world. And then the other thing is to do a 3 p.m. video every day, sharing some of the art instruction videos that we've done, uh, I think well over 600. And, 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 we uh, never ha and we never had to discount. We thought during COVID we better discount because we we need to survive. We want to give the artists more money. We you, know, you guys need a break. So every day at 3 p.m. when we run a video in the comments section, we put a discount code. So if you happen to be watching, you're going into the comments section. You can buy that at a at a pretty significant discount that day only. And so we've been doing that now for 240 days. And what. What's actually happened is it's resulted, in a, we, we are actually having to hire more people now to be able to pull this off because what's happened is that everybody, we thought we'd be doing this for two weeks. It wasn't a problem to take somebody off task for two weeks, but now seven, eight months into this, uh, we're now having to add more people to be able to continue to do this. And I, I said, I want to continue it uh, at least as long as we need to, to be there for you guys. And we might continue beyond that. We don't know. But uh, so we actually made a decision yesterday that we're going to hire somebody to help us out with this because we, we need the extra help. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on. So today I mentioned at 3 p.m., uh, today at 3 p.m., you're going to get a chance to see a little piece of this brand new video that Deborah Joy Grosser does. It's called Understanding the Effects of Light. And the way to find our videos is, that, first off, you can watch here where you're watching now. But also, if you go to YouTube or uh, on Facebook and you search Streamline Art or Streamline Art Video, you will find uh, the channels that we're on and then just uh, follow them or subscribe to them. Best if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way, uh, when you go to YouTube, you have access to everything that we've done all 240 days. I was uh, coaching a, an artist in, um, in uh, Sweden this morning. And I suggested he go back there because I have a marketing video that I did about the topic of how to get into art galleries. And he wanted some help with that. So if you go back into YouTube and search Streamline Art Video and you can hit subscribe, uh, then by doing that, you have access to all 240 days. And remember, it's not just my 12 noon thing, but all the uh, video samples that we put on there, too. And, and so those are there, and that's a great place, a great resource for you. So go there and subscribe. Now, a couple of other announcements. First off, the $30,000 Plan Air Salon Art Competition monthly will be ending in uh, at the end of this month, November. We have a monthly, and then we uh, the winners from the monthly get put into the annual to win the big money, but there's still prize money. And you can enter any painting. And what I always say is every judge, most of our judges are galleries. Every judge has something they like or they favor. And so if you entered something before and it didn't work, enter it again because every judge is, has different, different taste. I know that because I judge many art competitions. I judged a San Diego uh, uh, competition this week. I think it was the Watercolor Society. Well, it wasn't just, yeah, maybe it was Watercolor Society. I just judged the Art Renewal Center uh, uh, annual competition. So I do a lot of judging. And so I know how people think. And I think that you, you guys have an opportunity to win. Uh, if you're new to us, we have a free gift for you. It's called 97 Amazing Painting Secrets from the World's Best Artist. And if you go to 97tips.com, you can get that and download that two-hour video for free. Or if you want it on DVD, all we ask is that you pay the shipping, which is like seven bucks. So, which is, you know, these things uh, typically are about $107. And so that's a good way to get a sampling of a lot of great ideas from a lot of artists. And so you want to check that out. Um, I want to remind you guys that uh, tomorrow our guest will be Jean Peterson. And Jean is a, um, she's kind of a mixed media person and does some amazing work and a lot of fun. And it's going to be fun to explore that. So that's tomorrow. So don't forget that. And then uh, what else is going on? Well, this weekend, you know, I'm, I'm taking weekends off now. Yay. I went camping last weekend and, and I should probably show you uh, it's, I, I, I'm a little embarrassed by it and I probably should get a paper towel because it's wet. But if you bear with me, I'm going to go back there to my drying rack.
right. So uh, last weekend, I was all excited because we uh, we bought a camper and uh, we wanted to get out camping. Lori and I want to kind of go see the world a little bit and I, and I want to paint, right? And so we're, we're next to this beautiful river, the Frio River, which is about three hours from here. And it's got these great big trees and these uh, pine branches that have turned uh, uh, rust color. And, and they were just fabulous. And there was this little stream and, you know, the river was just beautiful. And uh, so I got everything all set up. I walked over there. Uh, it was about a 20 minute walk. And had all my gear, and I set up, and and then I realized I didn't have my brushes. So my first instinct was just to shut down and say, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to paint this weekend. But what I ended up doing is I thought, no, I am not going to let that get me down. You know, it's like one time I forgot my white. I thought, well, I'm just going to have to paint without white. And so I figured it out. And so I picked up a couple of sticks and a couple of branches and leaves and I had my rubber gloves on, so I painted with my fingers and sticks and branches. Now, this is not uh, this is not what I would consider a good painting or even a good study, but you can get a feel for what I was able to do. Uh, and that was just with sticks. And so it it was kind of a fun adventure. And uh, I don't want to have to do it very often. I, I miss my brushes, but uh, so I I now. I've learned my lesson, right? And one thing I always talk about is how don't borrow. Like if you have a plein air kit and uh, you, you know, you either keep it in your car, you keep it in your studio or something, and then you grab it, you want to have it so you can just grab it and go. What you don't want to do is, is get out there and realize you've, you don't have a panel or you don't have something. And so what I try to do, it's a tough habit to get into, but as soon as I get home, I restock my plein air kit and I put some new panels in it. And, and that way I know it's ready and I can just grab and go. And uh, I'm going to actually um, uh, put together a kit to keep in the camper that's just always there. Uh, so, But what had happened is I borrowed my brushes. I was looking for a particular brush and, and the studio piece I'm working on. And I, I, um, I left my brushes here in the studio. So what a silly thing to do. Anyway, okay, so um, today we're going to give away a prize, and the prize will be the Plein Air Magazine apron. Uh, the winner is, hang on a second, let's see who the winner is. The winner is Karen Fox in Washington. Now, I don't know if that's D.C. or Washington State, but either way, Karen, congratulations. Thank you. I have my dirty one back here, and I'll send you a brand new clean one. You see, this has a little bit of stuff on it, uh, just like all my... All my clothes, Mrs. Rose says, I have two kinds of clothes, those with paint on it and those that haven't got paint on it yet. So I, I was out here one day and this this uh, we, we had gone to church and I had had a suit on and a necktie and and uh, and I don't normally wear a, a suit or necktie even to church anymore. It's usually jeans and a shirt. And uh, but it must have been Easter or something. Anyway, I came out to the studio to get something and I had a painting going and I, it starts like, oh, I, I see what it needs. And I started working on it. And all of a sudden, it's like I'm painting. Right. And next thing you know, I've got a big splotch of paint on my suit, my expensive suit. Right. So that was ruined. And then the other day I'm in one of these. I always wear pretty much black or blue shirts and I, I'm in one of my dress shirts and the same thing happened. I, I, I did something and I, I went to dinner, but uh, my wife and I went to dinner and she said, what's that on your shirt? I said, what? And there was a big splotch of cadmium red right there on the shirt. I didn't even see it because it was out of, out of my view and I had looked in the mirror. So anyway, I got to stop doing things like that. Anyway, so today's prize for comments will be uh, my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art, which is a number one Amazon bestseller. And uh, just pick it up. Uh, anywhere uh, you can, you get books, right? It's going to help you with your art career, but uh, we will have a chance for you to win that. The way to win is to make a comment. We like it when you say where you're from. Uh, one of the reasons we do that is because we also sometimes, we, as a matter of fact, tomorrow we'll give away two books, one from inside the United States and one, si one from outside of the United States. And that's why I like it when you say, you know, I'm from Norway or Sweden or but Bolivia or wherever you are, and we've got people all over the world watching. So tomorrow 
uh, two copies of the book. And, and if you're outside of the U.S. or inside the U.S., you'll, we'll give you the choice of either a digital uh, version, you know, for your Kindle or something, or your choice of a print version. So whatever you want. So make sure you leave a, uh, a comment. I also want to encourage you to follow me. I'm here every day at 12 noon, but follow me on uh, Instagram, Eric Rhodes. It's R-H-O-A-D-S. And uh, that's a, uh, everybody spells Rhodes the wrong way. I'm the only one that spells it the right way. R-H-O-A-D-S. So uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram. On Facebook, you're going to have to follow Eric Rhodes Publisher. You can follow me on my personal Facebook account, but I can't follow you back because they've maxed out the number I can have. And I don't, Mark Zuckerberg isn't taking my calls to, to bump it up to 100,000, but I, I don't want to do a business page. I like to keep it personal. Okay, so I think I've done all my, and oh, I have one major announcement I completely forgot about, and that is uh, Watercolor Live. And Watercolor Live is coming up. Uh, it is going to be a massive conference, uh, online conference, so you don't have to leave home. And of course, many of us are getting locked up again. And so the 30th, uh, January 28th through 30th, and a beginner's day on the 27th of January, we have some of the finest artists in the world. I got a really nice note from Joe Zabukvich, who is considered like the master. He's in Australia. Got a nice note from him this morning. Everybody's really excited about this, about bringing the world of watercolor together for the first time really ever. Uh, this is the first international watercolor conference. Of, there are some, you know, some regional things. Uh, Florida is a big one, for instance, but it's the first time we're getting everybody together internationally. So you're going to be able to meet and participate with and have breakout rooms with artists from all over the world, uh, get to know other artists personally. And it's nice because then you can, you know, you say, hey, I'm coming to New Zealand and you can say, hey, uh, you know, let's go painting together. So it's nice to make some friends. So that's Watercolor Live. Go to watercolorlive.com. And now... I'm done, and I'm going to get back to our guest for today, Deborah Joy Grosser. Hey, Deborah, sorry about hey. all the announcements. Hey, that's all right, no problem. Uh, it's I too bad ready. we don't have anything going on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, I didn't, I didn't even I, talk I'm so it. excited. Thanks for thanks again for having me. I'm oh yeah, well, to... you're in high demand. Everybody wants you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to put you on full screen. Now right. we can see, uh, well, it's it's really interesting to look at your palette because your palette is, from what I can tell, um, more of a tonalist palette because it doesn't look like you have any really, really super bright yellows or reds on there. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'll tip oh, they're, oh, they're down at the bottom. There they are. <laughs> okay. There they are. So I basically, and, and in, in my video, um, I have a chart of all of my... Uh, all the colors that I use. And I've, um, I've gone to, I used to do just a strictly a limited palette and I've gone to a, a double, a, a double primary, basically a warm and cool of each of the primaries. And then I have, um, I started doing, you know, when I went back to doing portraits a few years ago, I found that a lot of the earth tones that I use to make skin tones were also beautiful colors in the landscape you know especially yeah. in rocks and cliffs and all of that kind of thing so i've added those back on so it looks like an awful lot of colors but um some of them are just for shortcut because you know when you're out you know painting on location like that's the majority of what i do is paint outdoors and uh you know i'm i'm looking to paint quickly and intuitively and and so anything that i can do yeah. to kind of Speed up that process. Is, yeah, is so I'm curious if you'll scroll, if you'll push it down a little bit again. Uh, I'm curious. You had looks like the radiant colors on there. I do, I do. I absolutely love those radiant colors. Um, I use them more as modifiers. You know, in addition to white, I'll add some of those uh, those radiants in to um, you know to keep the whites from getting chalky. Uh, they just work so beautifully. Well, for... that's one of the things that you went through in your video. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, uh, I just, I, I have them. I bought them a long time ago cause I buy everything, but, um, <laughs> Me the, too. uh, what I realized <laughs> is that, you know, if I would lighten a red with a white, I'm getting a, a pink, but if I lighten a red with a radiant pink, I'd get a strong, I'd get a, 
more chrome chromatic yes uh, lighter color right right and i don't know if you can see it too i actually i have two whites i i actually have the um gamblin's warm white and then i have a titan titanium zinc white so i have a warm white and a cool white so is so the warm, warm white kind of a buff color uh it's not really it, it's just it's just a just slightly warmer than than the titanium it's not like buff and it's not it's not yellow either it's not like naples yellow it's it's okay. very very um very it's, it's just it's very subtle very very subtle that's and it's, it's wonderful. Um, one of the tips in the video is you know, I do a little demo showing the difference between using warm white and cool white. When, when you want to keep a color warm, I, I mix it with the warm white rather than the cool white. And so that, that's one of my little teaser tips that's in the video. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm curious about that. So we got people tuning in from all over the world today. I see Norway. Hello, Norway. I will, uh, I'll, from time to time, I'll, I'll shout out, but I'm not going to uh, disturb you with, with too much of this. Cause I know you got a lot. I see Saskatoon, um, a lot of people across America, of course. Uh -huh. So, um, uh, tell you, you, you're going to talk about values today. I am. I am. Okay. Like I said earlier, um, the thing that, that I have found over, you know, many years of teaching is that values are the things that, that the students seem to struggle with the most. And you've, everybody's heard, you know, value does the work and color gets the credit. <laughs> and that's pretty much true. Um, and if, if you get the values right, it doesn't really matter if you get the color right. Um, if, if the values are right, that painting's going to read. And well, so and you can always, I mean, you can always just take a, basically a black and white study and throw some thin glaze of color over it and, it, mm -hmm. and it'll read beautifully. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And of course so, there are uh, lots of artists, you know, like Charlie Hunter, for instance, who that, you know, they, everything they do is just in basically one value, right. I mean, not one value, but in one color. Right, right. It's really good practice to do that, um, you know, to just do value studies, um, you know, whether you do them with paint or whether you just do, you know, black and white uh, markers or uh, pen and ink or whatever, pencil, um, just doing value studies is really, really uh, helpful. And you'll be surprised what you learn. Um, okay. In in Carlson's book, uh about landscape painting, uh, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. Um, he has a very simple chart about value planes in the landscape. And I just think this is one of my favorite things to teach. And so that's why I thought I, I would share that today. And, that. Yeah, so go ahead and throw up the first one. So basically, the general rule is um, when you have a landscape, the sky or the source of light is going to be the lightest value. And you can see that in this little, little sketch off to the right. Um, slanted planes are not getting as much, uh, or uh, let me go back, uh, flat planes, like flat ground, um, is getting direct light from the sky. And so that is going to be your second lightest value. Then you have slanted planes, which are not getting direct light. So they're going to be a little bit darker. So that's going to be an example of a slanted plane. So like in the example of this one, the mountain in the back right. would be like a slanted plane. Or if you have a building that doesn't have a reflective roof, <laughs> there's always exceptions to the rule. But, um, you know, slanted planes, a hillside. Um, and in my demo, I'm going to do real quick. I've got a... a a hillside um, that that you'll see um, is a little bit darker value than the road um, okay. that I'll be on. And then your darkest value planes are going to be the upright planes. So this is things like, you know, sides of buildings, um, trees. Um, this applies not only to the areas in light, but areas in shadow. So um, your shadows on a ground plane are going to be lighter than the shadows on an upright plane. So that's something that uh, to really keep in mind. I see that a lot in paintings where the ground shadows are darker <laughs> than the than the upright shadows on trees. And well, so uh, I think I think we tend to make these assumptions that a shadow right. is a shadow. Exactly. Exactly. 
but the shadows follow the same uh, the same uh, uh, pattern, I guess you would call it. Um, and then I've got a second photo here. And if you want to flip to that next one, uh, this is uh, such a great way to um, check your values in a, in a painting. So the one on the left is the reference painting I did um, that actually my video was based on. And then I took um, a, a black and white photo of it. And in this one, you can see this really illustrates those value planes really well. The grasses, a lot of people assume grass is is flat. Well, when you've got tall grasses like this, those are actually an upright plane. So you see those are dark values. Those trees are 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 the darkest value. Um, and then you've got the hill in the background that's a little bit lighter value. And then you've got the the pond, uh, you know, the lily pads and the you know, the algae in the pond is the second lightest. And then you've got the sky. And then and the, water. Other I, the other thing I see immediately, since you said that, is on the left you have that the, those tall grasses, but the top of the grass is getting reflection out of the sky. So the top yeah. of the grass is is really light, just like it exactly. would be if exactly. it were grass. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So um, a lot of times you'll see, uh, you know, if you notice trees, the tops of trees are reflecting the sky. So, you you know, depending if it's a warm sky or cool sky, you know, you'll get warm or cool reflected in the tops of trees, too. And, Can and you explain on that uh, to, for people who might not understand what that would mean, a warm sky or a cool sky? Oh, so if, if you have a warm sky, like uh, late afternoon, um, you know, sunset where you've got beautiful warm colors, um, that'll cast a warm light on your subject. Uh, you know, reds, oranges. If you have a cool sky, especially a, a, like a gray day, a cloudy day, where the sky is more cool, you know, more blue or, or gray or purple, um, you'll get those colors reflected in the ground planes and the tops of the trees and things like that. So, yeah, okay. just a little, a little tiny thing that can make a huge difference in your paintings. All right. Terrific. Okay. Well, we're going to let you get rolling here. All right. Sounds good. Well, I've got um, this is the this is the uh, image that I'm going to do a quick quick lay in for you. Let's see how much time do we have? About half an hour? About thirty oh, minutes? Oh, you got a, yeah, about about twenty five minutes. Yeah, twenty five minutes. Okay, I'll work really fast. <laughs> but this one you can see I've got um, upright planes, so those are the darkest value. I've got the sky is the lightest value. Then I've got this flat ground plane is the second lightest. And then I've got, there's a little bit of a hill here. There's some tall grasses over on this side. Um, and so I'll, I'll try to illustrate what I just told you about as far as the value planes in this demo. So I have, um, I went ahead and sketched this out. I worked on a, a linen panel. Um, and I toned it with a red. I always like to tone my paintings uh, the complementary color of whatever the dominant colors are in the painting. So landscapes, most of what I do has a lot of green and blue in it. And so 99% and of the time, I'll tone my painting with a, just a light wash of cad red light. And then I just drew this in uh, just you can tell it's just very, very simple, not detailed whatsoever. Just wanted to kind of get the basic shapes in and just a kind of a little roadmap for where I'm going right. to head. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start with blocking. I always block in the darks first, but, or the shadows first. Are you and doing a value study or are you doing a color? I'm going to do it in color. Okay. I'm going to do it in color. Right. And then um, later, uh, I'll be online later um, during the video. Uh, Premier, so I'll, I'll be av available to chat. And if you want, I can either. Are there comments on this? Are people commenting? Oh, I, on I will read. I will read questions as they come in. Yeah, uh, that'd be, that'd be yeah. great. And then, of course, you can go back in tonight and answer some questions too. Yeah. Uh, there will be a lot of replays later. Sure, okay, get, let's get started. We don't have a lot of time. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll finish this. Uh, however far I get today, uh, and then or, you'll post it. Then I'll post it and I'll also do a black and white of it too. So you can see them okay. side by side. Okay. Thank you. Hello.
Hello, Germany. Hello, Tyrol, Austria. Hello, Egypt. Wow. Hi, everybody. Thanks for thanks for watching. Hello, Pakistan. Hello. Uh, uh, let's see here. I, I said that one already. So are you using a, a thinned with uh, terps? Yeah, a little bit of Gamsol. Um, I'm really super close to my, my palette here, so I'm trying not to. Yeah, that's right. Hard it's, to get the camera close. And... Yeah, it's funny. Um, that's why when we do videos, we have crews. Oh, we have big I, lenses. You don't have to have to worry you, about that. You have the best crews, too. Thank I, you. Think I, I had so much fun with them down there. Well, they did, you know, they've done, uh, between the three of the guys that you worked with, they've done several major motion pictures, uh, a lot of national television shows, and uh, yeah. they're really, they're the, they're the best. They are, they are. I was, I was just amazed. We, we had a chat about that and I was blown away at some of the things that they've worked on. Whoa. Felt like a movie star. <laughs> You are a movie star. I, I I like the way that you hold your brush too. What tell everybody why you do what you do? Okay, so if I if I hold my brush like this, I tend to get too graphic. Holding it by the end, I can get my whole arm into it, and I end up being a lot more painterly that way. Okay, all right. Hello, Chile, Kazakhstan, France. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. You're a, so pop, awesome. you're a popular person around the world. <laughs> well, hello from Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm keeping my thins or my, my darks a little bit thin. And is your intent to put your darks in before you do anything else? Yes. Yep. Some, yeah, some people to will paint from back to front. Some people light to dark, some dark to light. Yep. I do. I do shadows, shadows and then light. So, okay. Long and time you would ago, consider your dark planes really almost shadow, wouldn't you? Right. Right. Yep. The dark. So I get all these dark upright planes. There's a little of a bush right here. And I try to get the values as accurately as I can. So um, this this uh, big shadow shape of this tree is a little bit further back. So I'm going to lighten that in value. And then these trees in the very back are way in the distance. So for the purpose of atmospheric perspective and describing the layers of uh, atmosphere and and uh, so are you actually lightening the value or just making it a different tone of the same value? Uh, I actually lighten the value too. It's a, okay. it's a lighter value as it goes back in the distance. Okay. Yeah. So we've got, there's a tree here and I'm leaving areas that are in the light. Are you painting in your gallery or your studio? This is my gallery and okay. my studio is upstairs and uh, I've got a big construction project going on out back. So there's utility trucks back there and they're hovering over the roof of my studio right now. All so right, I so decided we, not to. We get some noise. We'll understand. Yeah. Yeah. So you might hear, we have a volunteer fire department here. That's right around the corner. So it, you might hear a siren once in a while. So never mind it if that happens. Do you know so, what the number one cause of fires in homes is? What's that? I'm asking you. Um, well, I know my my son had a house fire a few years ago, and it was caused when his laptop computer blew up. Believe it or not. Yeah. Well, the number that that's very close. The number one cause is uh, cell phones laying on things like beds. You know, laying yeah. on on material exactly. or paper. Uh, exactly. And they overheat when you're charging them, and then they catch the house on fire. It's number one. Exactly cost. what happened to my son with his laptop. Yeah. Um, 10 and years I only ago. know that because we have a fireman that that comes out and works with us. Uh, he came out, and we have him go through 
we could do fire drills with the family and, you know, be prepared. So oh, he sure. always said, you know, don't lay that cell phone on a piece of paper or uh, anything that's going to catch on fire. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah don't really lay it on your bed. Number one is, is laying it on your bed. Right. Exactly. How are we doing on time? Well, you're at 35 minutes. We're 35 minutes into it. So you, we're going to stop at about five till. So you got, you got time. 20 minutes. Okay. How do you decide when you have a good value composition? Abstract shapes, yes, but what are the differences between meh composition and a great <laughs> composition? Well, you know, I it, composition is something I've never really struggled with a lot. Um, you know, you really want to try to get a, a, a nice visual a nice balance as far as visual weight, you know, you want to have what what's over here is balanced off by over here. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of, uh, there's all different composition designs you can do, um, you know, the S shape and the steel yard and all those kind of things. Um, I don't know if you can see that's, that's not quite light enough. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you to keep painting when you talk, just because I know you're limited on time. Right. Uh, somebody asked is what, tell us about American impressionist society. Uh, oh. Can anybody be a member? Do you have to be juried in? What's the story there? You do not have to be juried in. Um, you just uh, need to be a legal resident of the United States. Unfortunately, we don't at this time have international membership. Um, something we've talked about, and, you know, you never know, that may change. Um, Anybody can enter shows? Yes, as long as you're a paid member, um, you can enter shows. And we have um, two national jury shows that are physically in galleries. And then we have um, uh, an online show that we did our very first online show this year. Our national show is going on right now at um, a loom gallery in um, St. George, Utah. And that runs through December 5th. Great gallery. And if you go to um, the AIS website, it's um, AmericanImpressionistSociety.org. And you can see our schedule of shows for next year. Uh, next year's national show is actually going to be here in Omaha. So oh, bringing it home to, to Omaha. Right. Well, I've never been to Omaha. Oh, you'll have to come. We yeah. have a nice wine cellar too. So <laughs> you're welcome to go. Yeah, well, you've put me in front of a, a wine cellar full of wine. There may not be any left. I'm just <laughs> I was telling Allie uh, before, uh, our stock is going down since we've been you know, hunkering down at home. <laughs> so I talked to my friend the other day and he said, you know, we always save the good wine for our guests, but we haven't had any guests lately. So we're, yeah, we're, uh, we're starting to dip in it it ourselves. So, okay. So this is, uh, you know, another thing I like to do is try to connect the shadows that kind of gives a, a nice, rhythm and kind of a you know your eye can kind of flow through the painting uh -huh. hello to india my goodness so there exciting. is a uh there's a link in the comments from ais if you want any information about membership there's a phone number you can call yeah just yeah we'd love to we'd love to have you so basically uh, you know we we get asked you know what is impressionism and there's such a range of what is considered impressionism. Yep. Um, oh, Russia. And, you know, I think that I've told this story many times, but I think uh, our friend uh, Jeff Sewell had the best definition I ever heard of what is impressionism. And he, he said that over here you have um really super tight realism and 
Over here, you have completely non-representational abstract, and there's this big rainbow in between. Yeah. And that's impressionism. And I thought uh, that's the best explanation I've ever heard of it. Really it's great, not yeah. super tight realism. It's not non-representational. It's it's in between. Okay, so I have all my uprights and I've got my ground shadow and you can see that ground shadow is lighter. It, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit as I go, but um, this ground shadow is lighter than these upright shadows. And going back in the distance, it's a little bit uh, uh, lighter in value and a little grayer bluer as it goes back. It's probably a little hard to see on here. It looks pretty dark all the way around. But then the next thing I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm going to put in the uh, flat uh, road here and get that value right. I okay. always leave my um, sky till last. Um, I always find that if I put the sky in first, I end up, um, whoops, get a clean brush here. I try to do uh, one brush for my darks and one brush for my lights too. And I try to keep my lights on one side of my palette, and my shadows on the other side, you know, yeah. dark values on one side, light values on the other side. No, you're much more disciplined than I am. <laughs> It doesn't always work. In fact, in my video at the very end, I started mishmashing it all up. So, <laughs> so you're gonna you're basically laying everything in as kind of a big flat shape, yeah. And then kind you of go in and carve into that shape with other color and exactly right. Yep. Right. I I studied with. Um, uh, our dear friend Kevin McPherson for many years. And this was, I learned this technique from him and it just always made so much more sense to me, um, you know, to get those shadows blocked in first and um, to, uh, you know, when, when you're working outside, you know, the shadows are always moving. So if you get those blocked in right away, um, you you're not you end up less likely to chase the light right so i'm kind of at a funny angle here so yeah, i know well you know that's it's the price of stardom <laughs> yeah. we do what we have to do like your brushes and your sticks and and that's your right. fingers that yeah. was a great painting by the way no, no, it wasn't a great painting <laughs> It might look okay on, on screen, but it was pretty awful. But well, at least I, you know, the, if, if nothing else, I, I have a memory of it. I have a photograph of it, and I go. captured the essence of the color. Yeah. And so at least now I have a study that I can use to create a real painting. That's exactly right. And, you know, oftentimes that's that's the best thing when you go outside and, and, and paint is um, you don't have to come away with a – a finished painting by any means. You can, um, you know, uh, color studies are so helpful, especially, you know, if you plan to go in and do um, uh, studio paintings later. Yeah. And I find, oh. you know, I'll use multiple studies, you know, I'll be looking for you know, gosh, how did I do that tree in that painting? And I think I can use that tree in this painting. And oh. so. Well, hello, uh, hello, Wales. Hello, Ireland. Oh. Uh, welcome, welcome in Deutschland. My goodness. It's been Eric Rhodes. That's about all I can say. And uh, nice to have people. I got South Africa. Outstanding. Nice. To have you guys here. My Do you ever use a palette well, knife? John, ask a question. What's that? Do you ever ask use a palette knife? Not very often. I, I don't very often. Um, I just really like the brushwork. Sometimes I'll I'll go in and do that um, for texture, but mm -hmm. not very often. Somebody hey. from. Bari, Canada, said they were listening to their prime minister speak. These noon and 3 p.m. broadcasts are a great way for us to stay home. 
Thank you. Oh, You're welcome. Great. Well, I sure I sure hope they're helpful. Hope this one's helpful. <laughs> oh, of course it's helpful. Northern British Columbia, Israel, welcome. Thank you. Wow. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a yummy color. Isn't that a great right, color? You're, you're at about 10 minutes, and then oh. and then the uh, big hook comes in. <laughs> okay. We will. And I think uh, oh. you ha have you been on stage or you're about to be on stage at the Plein Air Convention. Is that right? I was supposed to be this year. Um, yeah. well, like hopefully, I hopefully we'll be able to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, I was on the demo stage a couple of years ago. Yeah. That was cool. so much fun. It's a fun event. I, I think, you know, once once we're all feeling safe and allowed to go out, we're, we're going to see events like that. Just everybody's going to go because it's like we have missed it so much and missed yeah. getting together with our family of yeah. artists. You know, plein air convention is like Thanksgiving for artists. It is. And you're you know, people, could, people you want to be with. That's exactly right. We um, we had our very first AIS artist retreat on Mackinac Island back in August. And we really agonized over whether or not to do it or not. So we limited it to 25 people and everything was outdoors. And I'll tell you what, it was the best. It was just the best thing. Um, yeah. I felt the same way. We did fall color week this year. We had originally had 125 people coming, but we had to had, had a lot of people cancel. We had 40 people and we had such a great time Yeah, and we were all being very cautious. Nobody got sick. Yeah. So it was good. Yeah. Same thing with, um, with the AIS show in St. George, you know, we did as much as we could outside and, uh, what was inside was in a huge room. So we had plenty of, room to you know spread out and and do things safely and people were good about wearing their masks and jenny wants to know how you mixed that green oh um uh, you know my gray in it no really uh it's um it's uh what is it ultramarine blue cad yellow light and then I kind of picked up a little bit of my shadow color, which was um, some purple. So I mix, I mix um, a warm green and a cool green out of yeah. my um, out of my primaries. And so I mixed a little of that in with purple to get okay. that. So that kind of takes a little of that bite out of the color. Yes, it does. Okay, so you can see how this is a darker value because this is kind of on a hillside. This is a light val a lighter value. It's it's darker than the sky. And when I get the sky blocked in, which I probably won't get done here now, but I think you can I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna let you off the hook. You're gonna have to finish this painting. <laughs> I'll finish it today and I'll I'll post it later if I don't get done today. So now one other point I wanted to make earlier, I talked about how um, the upright areas in light um, are darker than the areas of light on the flat planes. The, right. the, the light and the shadow both follow that value plane pattern. So I want to make sure that my upright lights are darker than my slanted planes or my flat planes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Hope you guys are enjoying this today. I hope so, too. Do you use any medium at any other stage? I use, I love the Gamblin um, solvent-free gel. I use yeah. a lot of that. Um, That's nice. Hello, Sweden. Hello, Philly. Ah, somebody on here mentioned Elaine Miller says she's going to Russia. Ooh, she's going yeah. to Russia with us. That's going to be right. fun. That would be a fun trip. Yeah, we got a bunch of people signed up. There's over 300 people have are interested, and we can only take 40. It's now down to 46 people. Oh, so gosh. It's, it's as far be as a, a fight. The people will be fighting in the streets. <laughs> 
hopefully not the streets of Russia. Yeah, hopefully not. So you can yeah. see how now I've got I've got my lights in. I'm putting yeah. the lights in, and then I'll do the same thing over here. Um, Just give us a tiny bit of sky. I know that's not what you sure. would normally do, but people need to see how you lay in that sky. Sure, and then how I cut it in with the... Um, I don't mean to push you around or direct you, but I got to <laughs> give these people what they want. I know it. I know it. Let me uh, let me get the get these little bushes in here. All right, let's do a little sky. Let me get a clean brush. I always do a clean brush for my sky because man, you can really mess up the. Now that what that book that's a different brush. It looks black and. Yeah, so this you, is this you, is a. You took that off your palette completely to a different area to mix. Yeah, I do. I did. Yeah, I, I've got this little palette extender on my open box M. Yeah. And this, I always do my sky over here. Great idea. So you're not polluting your color. Not polluting the color. Yep. Exactly right. So. Now that tip alone was worth the price that we paid for admission. <laughs> All right. Let's get a little sky going here. And what kind of brush was that? Um, this one is a Princeton. It's a Princeton Catalyst. Okay. And um, those are good. I think it's a mixture of a lot of different brushes. Um, so got, will you will you leave a little bit of space so you're not touching the color in the tree so you don't pollute your I'm sky? Going, I'm going right up to it, and yeah. then the key is when you do that, you're going to get into some of that color. So you want to constantly. Um, wipe your brush off okay uh, in between um because otherwise you end up just dragging dragging stuff everywhere i just put the url for paintrussia.com in the comments for somebody who asked thank you oh great yeah. so and what I'm, I'm kind of cutting up into that and, and then wiping, uh, out, wiping your brush out so that you're not getting that color polluting it Every and when you every, put your sky in, do you make it lighter towards the horizon or pinker? What do you typically do? Oh yeah, it depends on the time of day. Um, this one was had kind of some distant clouds and they were actually a little bit pink. So you want to lighten your sky as it goes down to the horizon generally. Um, again, depending on, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. Um yeah. Rules are made to be broken, right? Yeah, they are. Once you understand them, then you can break them. But you need to understand them first, I think. Okay. Well, My I'll opinion. tell you what, Deborah, we're going to have to stop painting and then get you back just on camera, and we'll okay. say a say a fair fond farewell. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, let me come back in here and join you. All right. Yeah, there we go. Well, uh, thank you for this. This has been marvelous. I think that uh, people will love the fact that you'll post the final painting in a black and white version uh, later on in the day. Uh, by the end of the next few days, you'll have 10, 12,000 views. And so can't hurt <laughs> to go back in and answer some questions from time, time to time. And, and uh, of course, if you guys are interested in Deborah's uh, video, she's going to be doing a sample of it today at 3 p.m. Uh, not live, but uh, we'll be there live. It'll be on Facebook and, and YouTube. And then and we'll be playing a segment of that plus an interview with Deborah. Uh, that'll be at uh, 3 p.m. today on YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Uh, also, if you're interested in her brand new video, it's called Understanding the Effects of Light. Uh, this is a close up of the painting. This is the whole painting. And uh, it, that looks a little dark in this picture, but it yeah, is. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it's anyway, a it's a fabulous painting and it's a fabulous video. And you can find that at, at lilyartvideo.com. And if you wait till the 3 p.m., uh, there's a discount code that will be in the comments section. So look for that. Deborah, thank you so much for doing this for us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me and be inspired, everybody. Go, go make some beautiful work and put it out there in the world. All right. Thanks again. Bye. You bet. Bye. Well, that is Deborah Joy Grosser, and she's the president of the American Impressionist Society, which you should check out. And check out her new video at lilyartvideo.com. 
Uh, we love doing this for you guys. And I'm just so warmed and humbled by your presence showing up every day, man, that means a lot. And, and, uh, I, I just want us to stay, um, keep our heads positive. I, you know, I have this term I use called doom scrolling, right? We sit around on Facebook or Twitter and, and, you know, we doom scroll, we look for all the news and the negative, you know, we see all the negativity and we see people getting all upset about, you know, their opinions of what should be happening. That's not happening. And, you know, it's just very all consuming. And everything in our lives, the quality of our lives starts right here. And what's in your head and how you deal with what's in your head is going to be how you process information. And if you surround yourself with negativity, you will begin processing information with negativity. If you surround yourself with things that you love and positive things and things that little kittens and and, and kitty cats, <laughs> you know, uh, if you do things that you love, and that's why we're trying to put this out there. We have literally heard from hundreds and hundreds of people who have told us that um, they've started painting for the first time because they stumbled into this because somebody happened to have shared it. Uh, they've, uh, we've heard from people who've said, I picked up a paintbrush for the first time in 20 years or 30 years or 40 years. I mean, we've heard from people who have not been painting their whole lives and picked it up again. And it's re-inspired a lot of people. So we want this to be there for you to keep your head in the game and for you to stay positive and, and just be as upbeat as you can. So I want you to take good care of yourself because things are always a little crazy right now. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and we don't know what else is about to hit. You know, 2020 is one of those years and you know, we, we just have to remember that stay positive, stay upbeat, keep your head in the game. Do not uh, allow them to win, whoever them is, whoever they are, right? The idea is, uh, you know, cut the negative people out of your life uh, to the best you can. I mean, there's some people you can't cut out of your life, but I have, uh, if, if you've been unfriended by me on social media, it's because you're doing politics. I don't care if you're doing left or right politics, uh, you're out of my life. I'm sorry about that, but I just don't want to pollute my own brain with that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to not watch the news. I'm watching comedies at night because I want to laugh. And of course, I'm in my studio painting and listening to upbeat music and get, get up in the morning and dance around to some upbeat music. Feel good about yourself because that's how you make your brain survive all of this. Because when you get the negativity all of a sudden it starts uh, creating stress and stress, you know, you're going to end up having negative things happen in your body because of stress. We don't need that. So eat well, get your exercise, but most importantly, keep your head in the game. Stay positive. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will be here to, uh, I'll be here Monday. Hard to believe it's Friday already. I think we're going to go camping again this weekend. If I can, if I can get out of here early, uh, we found an app that it's called uh, Harvest Something, and it allows you to kind of go around and, and camp on people's farms and wineries and things like that. So I think we're going to go camp on a winery. And uh, so that'll be kind of fun. So I'll be here again on Monday. Of course, I'll be here uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, with the pre-recorded segments that I've done on, uh, on the daily 3 p.m. videos. Thanks for being here, and uh, make sure to leave a comment so you can win a prize. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plein Air Magazine, and Streamline Art, which is a whole bunch of things collectively. We'll see you uh, on Monday. Have a great weekend.